Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to speak about the general pr principle of chromatography. So I'm going to mention the different types of chromatography and I'm going to speak generally about the principle we use in chromatography and uh, how is it performed. So let's first start talking about what is chromatography. Chromatography in general is a separation technique. So it's a technique used to separate different materials in a mixture or in an extract. Saying that I have an extract from a plant or a protein extract, chromatography is used to separate the extra, this, the, uh, the, the substances in the extract from each other. The first character I use uh, in order to separate the substances is the relative affinity. So different substances have different affinities to different solvents, let's say. And this character is used to separate the substances from each, uh, from each other. There is a, like um, a parameter called the partition coefficient. The partition coefficient is the ratio of, uh, of the concentration of one substance um, in two different uh, solvents. So saying that it, how, how to calculate partition coefficient, it's the concentration of a certain, of let's say, substance X. It's the uh, concentration of substance X in, solution, uh, in solvent number one over the concentration of substance X in solution uh, in solvent number two. So the partition coefficient represents the, affin the different affinity, uh, affinities of a certain substance in, di in different uh, solvents. And this is what we use in order to separate different substances from each other. Now why do I have to separate? Why do, if I have a, a certain uh, mixture, then when, why do I have to separate? Uh, I may need to separate because of two reasons. First of all is anal analysis. So if I have, let's say, an extract, for a plant extract, and I want to see what's inside it, then I need to uh, separate the substances in order to analyze them. And second is the purification. If I need one substance from the mixture, I need to separate them to get to purify the substance I need. Now, as I told you, the principle of chromatography depends on the affinity of different substances to different solvents because each substance in, uh, in the world has different affinity to different substances or to different solvents. And this affinity uh, is, may, is derived from its solub the different solubilities, its solubility, the adsorbability, the charge, um, and, or the chemical affinity. So each substance would react with the, uh, with, the, with the other material differently. And to understand this better, I'm going, you can do something at home. So you can take a paper, like an adsorbable pa paper, um, preferably like a, a coffee filter paper, and you can put some, uh, um, some colors on it and then wash it with water. What you're going to see is that different colors are washed out differently. Why? Because different colors are made up of different substances. And then if you see here, for example, the red is washed out before the, the blue because the red uh, has higher affinity to water. So when I wash the, the paper with water, the red, because the red has higher affinity to water, so it's moves with water before the blue and then here the purple moves before the green because the purple has higher affinity to water than the green and this is a representation about the idea or the principle of chromatography different colors has different affinities to water and then when i wash two colors together one color is washed out because before the other because they have different affinity to water now, if I want to, to speak about the general principle, principally when I want to perform chromatography, and this is very important, in chromatography I have two faces. When I, when I say chromatography, then I'm speaking about two faces. The two faces should be immiscible. And what does that mean? It means that they cannot ever, um, uh, they cannot ever mix with each other. Now the two phases are first the stationary phase and from the name stationary means it's fixed, it doesn't move. 
So it's fixed in one place and it doesn't move. And the second is the mobile phase. And this one is the movable one because from its name, the mobile. From its name, it moves. Now, uh, since I have different uh, different types of chromatography, the I might have the gas chromatography, and in gas chromatography, the mobile phase is or or the liquid chromatography. In gas chromatography, the mobile phase is gas, um, and the stationary phase is either liquid or solid. I use gas chromatography when I have gas mixtures mixture to separate so when my sample is gases gases then i use gas chromatography when my sample is liquid then i use liquid chromatography because the mobile phase here is liquid and the stationary phase could be either solid or liquid now why should i use gas or liquid because my sample the sample i want to separate is always um, mixed with the mobile phase or dissolved in the mobile phase so it should be this the same um the same manner so if my sample is gas i need to use gas chromatography if my sample is liquid i need to use liquid chromatography now how does it work? It's generally like this. So saying that I have a stationary phase, let's say in a column or in a paper or, what, or whatever, I have a stationary phase and the stationary phase is fixed. It doesn't move. And then I have a mobile phase and this one is either a gas or a liquid holding my sample inside. And then the mobile phase moves or migrates through the stationary phase. Now what's going to happen? Is that the substances inside my sample are going to be separated according to their different affinities toward the mobile phase and the stationary phase. So if the substance have if the substance has very high affinity to the stationary phase, then the substance is going to stuck on the stationary phase. While the mobile phase is moving through the stationary phase, this substance will stick on the stationary phase because it, high, it has high affinity to the stationary phase. If the substance has lower affinity to the stationary phase, phase then it will uh, still moving to the to, with the mobile phase until it stuck. Air, it sticks later on the stationary phase. If a substance has very low affinity to the stationary phase and a higher affinity toward the mobile phase, it will be it will uh, stay in the mobile phase till the end. And this is how the substances are separated. So the substance in the mi substances in the mixture are separating according to their different affinities toward the mobile phase and the stationary phase. Now, how to perform it? How, how you can perform um, chromatography? I'm going to speak about the the basis the basis uh, type of chromatography, which is paper chromatography. So the basis type is paper chromatography. There is also a TLC thin layer chromatography. The difference between them is the stationary phase, because in paper chromatography, the stationary phase is a paper. Is a chromatography paper made of, made of uh, cellulose, and in thin layer chromatography, the stationary phase is a thin layer of silica or an uh, absorbable uh, material fixed on a surface. So I'm going to tell you how to perform paper chromatography. Now, first you take a piece of plant leaf, um, you smash it in with a with a mortar. And then you, you apply it this way. So you apply um, uh, you apply a, 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 a little amount of the leaf extract or of the plant extract on a chromatography paper. The chromatography paper is made of cellulose, so it's quite um, a polar. And you put the leaf extract here. And then you put propanone or ethanol at the bottom, and the and you leave it for ser for like ten minutes. What's going to happen is that the propanone has uh, will move through the paper by capillary forces, and then when the propanone moves, it will take the leaf extract with moving out, and then the different substances or organic substances in the leaf extract 
who have different affinities toward the propanone and the cellulose will be stuck on the cellulose in different uh, levels like this so the um, anthocyanin anthoc uh, the anthocyanin has very low affinity toward propanone and has higher affinity to the cellulose so it will stick on the cellulose earlier while the carotenoids has higher affinity to the mobile phase and because of this the carotenoids will move with the mobile phase and then it will stick uh, later uh, we need to stop or we need to take the paper before the mobile phase reaches the end of the paper so we stop the chromatography whenever we want now this Depend, this experiment depends on the relative affinity. It depends on two uh, uh, two properties: the solubility, the solubility of the different substances in propanone, and the adsorbability of different substances on the paper. Um, now, after I get these different substances stuck on the paper, how can I know what substances do I have? And the thing I use is something called the retention factor. Each substance has a retention factor who I know previously because each, yeah, each substance has a retention factor. The retention factor is the distance traveled by the substance divided by the distance traveled by the solvent. What does it mean? So for car carotenoids, for example, it's the distance from this point to this point, so it's the distance traveled by the substance divided by the distance traveled by the solvents from, from this point to this point. This is relative affinity and it's, um, it's a way we use to identify, it's an identification uh, factor for different substances on TLC or in, on paper chromatography. So this is how, how we perform paper chromatography and how we analyze. Now, paper chromatography is a, a technique used to analyze, but we cannot separate or purify because I told you before, chromatography is used either for analysis or for purification. In paper chromatography, we cannot purify because we cannot, like, we cannot purify one substance from the others. We can only analyze them. If we want to, uh, to purify, then the best to perform is the column chromatography. And column, in column chromatography, we have a column and we have an adsorbable material inside the column, like a raisin or whatever. Then we load the sample and then we load the solvent over it. The, sol the solvent is going to take the sample with and migrate through the stationary phase. And then the red material who has higher affinity to the solvent will migrate faster with the solvent and will be extracted first. And then the green material who has a lower affinity to, to the solvent will be extracted then. And then the blue material who has very low affinity to the solvent will be stuck on the, on the column and then it will be extracted by gravity forces because Everything here in the column chromatography moves by gravity forces. Now, this is column chromatography. <clears throat> one of the one of the best uh, applications on co column chromatography is HPLC. I'm going to speak about HPLC later in other uh, in another video because I need a full video about co uh, column chromatography and HPLC. Now, let's speak in general about. Um, yeah, so this is uh, this all depends on the relative uh, affinity on the like uh, the same as we saw in paper chromatography, the solub solubility in the solvent and the adsorbability on the adsorbable material. So the types of chromatography. Now I'm going to tell you different types of chromatography and I'm going to make uh, other videos about different types of chromatography. So first is affinity chromatography, which is a chromatography uh, depends, uh, that depends on a specific um, chemical binding or specific interaction between the substance and the stationary phase. Um, usually we use column chromatography for this. 
Um, size exclusion chromatography. In size exclusion chromatography, we separate substances according to their size using a gel that contains uh, uh, certain pores, pore size. The ion exchange chromatography from its name, uh, in ion exchange chromatography, we have a charged uh, stationary phase and a charged uh, substances, and then the substances will be separated uh, according to their charge. Uh, the hydrofabric interaction chromatography, it depends, we, in, it, we separate the substances uh, depending on the hydrophobic surface area. And this last one is multimodal chromatography, in which we 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 use multi like multi type properties of the substances to separate them. So these are different types of chromatography. I will speak about them later in uh, different videos. Now this is everything I wanted to tell you generally about chromatography. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you enjoyed it, please like, share it with your friends. Um, if you have any question, write in the comments. Any so, um, if you have any suggestion, write in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and see you in the next video. Bye.